You've put in the hard work, done countless miles over the last few months, pushed through many difficult runs, no doubt highs and lows along the way. Running has completely taken over your life, but you can now finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. That start line is in sight. Congratulations, you've reached the taper phase. My name is Ben Parks, a 225 marathoner. I've run nearly 100 marathons over the years and coached so many athletes to achieve their PBs over the marathon distance. This video is a collection of everything I've learned and used in my own training and everyone we coach. So starting out, what is tapering? Well, in simple terms, tapering is reducing the volume we are running each week to maintain our accumulated fitness while allowing us to fully recover from the training block that we've just been through. This full recovery period we're about to go through will allow us to use that fitness to its full potential and reach race day in our peak state to go out there and perform. If you don't taper, then you run the real risk of arriving at the start line tired and fatigued. So many runners are really scared of losing fitness, but over the taper period, our muscles will be repairing, our body is recovering, our mind is recovering as well. And it will give us the opportunity to sharpen everything up to be in the best possible shape on the day. All of our training plans follow a three week taper. The first week, you've only got a very small reduction in the amount of volume and then two weeks out you see a decent reduction and then one week out quite a big reduction in overall volume right let's go through each week in detail starting out with three weeks to go. So with three weeks to go, you're talking around about a 10 to 15% drop in overall volume compared to our peak week. So if your biggest week was 100K, for example, this week you're talking around about 85 to 90K in volume. We wanna be keeping our intensity the same, so our long run, our speed sessions, and our strides should still be in there, just as they always have been. The number of runs that should stay the same as well. We're just slightly reducing the length of those runs. Your long run this week is still gonna be fairly long, around about 16 to 18 miles for a lot of people. And it's the final chance to practice in your race day kit and with your race day nutrition as well to make sure they're completely dialed in so you can be feeling really confident. You also want to have a quick look at your nutrition now, just making sure you're getting some good protein sources in there each week just to help that recovery and help our muscles repair. Right, it's getting a little bit serious now, two weeks to go. And this is when a lot of people start getting a little bit nervous and thinking they're gonna be losing a little bit of fitness. But don't worry, trust the process, you're going to be fine. At this point in the taper, we can't add any fitness we're now just concentrating on maintaining that fitness we've built and refreshing everything and getting nice and recovered to maximize the potential of using that fitness. So in terms of volume wise, we're looking around about a 30 to 35% drop in that peak week volume. So using our 100K example there, we're talking about 65 to 70K running this week. You wanna also be keeping the same structure that you've been used to as well. Again, just slightly shorten those runs, but don't go adding in any extra rest days. Just keep the structure the same as you've been following through your plan. You also want to be keeping a little bit of intensity in there as well. Keep your speed session in there for the week. Maybe just cut down the reps a little bit. If you've been doing say six or seven by three minutes, maybe now do four or five by three minutes. Just so our body can recover that little bit quicker from that workout. And in terms of long run range, for anything from about 10 to 15 miles for our long run. And it's also a really good time to book in a sports massage and again, get those legs nice and refreshed, get everything flushed out of our legs so they'll be feeling really nice and poppy and ready for race day. It's also a really good time to plan out your race day logistics, your travel, how you're getting there, any last minute gel purchases, but don't go trying any new gels, just those gels you've been practicing and you know they're going to be working, how you get into the expo, where you're going to be meeting your friends and family, and of course downloading our race day checklist from the website, we'll link to that down below, because we want to be keeping that stress to a minimum. And what was going to make you very, very stressful is if you go and get a cold or an illness this week, so really try and focus on getting some extra vitamin C in your body, just a supplement or just natural things like orange juice, things like that, just to help keep that immune system topped up and keep those colds and sicknesses at bay. Right, moving on to the most important week. Race week is here, probably six days to go before one of the biggest runs of your life. But don't worry, you're gonna be absolutely fine. This week is gonna be quite common for a lot of people to be feeling just a little bit lethargic. Maybe your energy levels are a little bit lower than normal. There may be a few little extra aches and pains. This is called taper tantrums or maranoia. We'll come on to chatting about that a little bit later on. But for now, in terms of our volume, we're talking around about a 60 to 70% drop in overall volume, about 30 to 40k plus the race. 
This will be a bigger drop for the beginner plans if people are following that though. What I really like to do with everybody is a marathon pace practice session, so lower intensity, something like three or four by five minutes at your goal pace on the Tuesday or Wednesday with just jogging recoveries between. Just reminding our body what that race pace feels like. Again, it won't add really any extra fatigue into our body. I would also say this never feels easy, but it's a really good thing to do. But don't go panicking too much of, how am I gonna run three, four hours at this pace? It never feels easy, but it's just good to remind our body what that race pace feels like. Some people like to put some strides, a little short burst, about 15 to 20 seconds of running, just to help freshen up the legs, just get that turnover up a little bit more, and they won't be adding really any extra fatigue. I personally wouldn't be doing any strength work this week, probably from about 10 days into the race, I wouldn't be doing any strength work because as you know, I've said quite a few times, this week is all about recovery. Many people will suffer with what is known as maranoia or taper tantrums, as I just touched on earlier. When your body presents these really weird pains and aches, you freak out thinking that every pain in your body is gonna be some career ending injury. This is happening pretty much every race I've done. And about nine times out of 10, your body is absolutely fine. It's just the stress you're going through and your body adapting to all the changes and just becoming a little bit fresher and ready for race day. So try not to get too stressed about it, but believe me, I know that's a lot easier said than done, but just be aware that it is a thing that happens to a lot of people. Should I run the day before the race? Run if you want to. It's not gonna have any bearing on the race, but just two or three miles, three, four, five K, something like that, very relaxed and very easy. The main benefit of doing this is just keeping your stress levels lower, just helping combating those nerves. This whole week is about listening to your body and trying to get as much sleep in as you can so we're going to be feeling fresh for race day now a lot of people it's going to be very hard to sleep on usually that saturday night the day before the race you're going to have all sorts of stress and worries going through your system so we really want to try and prioritize that thursday and that friday night to really try and get to bed early and get a decent night sleep in then so when that inevitable, slightly sleepless, restless night happens on Saturday, which has happened to me so many times over the years, and I've always had a pretty good run on race day as well. So don't worry about it. Thursday night, Friday night, that's the key nights you wanna be getting a good night's sleep. Also, starting to think now about carb loading in those two to three days before the race as well. And if you are doing like a destination marathon, you're going to some exciting place, please this week, don't go doing 20,000, 30,000 steps a day, doing all your sightseeing. Do that after the marathon. Wear that medal with pride as you're walking around a beautiful city. If you're interested in my exact 24 hours before a race day, everything I'm doing and eating and things like that, that video is coming up next. Click over here for that. But finally, best of luck with your race day. Let us know how you get on. I'm sure you're going to be amazing. We're going to be in Boston and London coming up. London will be at the Expo as well, exhibiting there every day. We'll hope to see you there. Keep on working hard, guys. Keep on done. And we'll see you very soon in the next one.